morning, everyone. Getting back to work. And I got three choices of grease, but I already know what I'm going to go with. What do you guys think I'm going to use? All right, so this is some of the grease I have. I got some Maxima waterproof grease. I got, of course, that John Deere cornhead grease, and I got some Mobile One synthetic grease. But I'm gonna go with the cornhead. From what I've read and the people I talked to at John Deere, they said for gear boxes, this is purposely made. And they said, whatever this stuff goes into, it lasts a lifetime of the equipment, whatever you put it into. That's what a, you know, a couple guys that work there told me. So and they say it binds, it sticks, it gets in the gears, it stays on the gears, it doesn't splash to the side and stick like a, you know, a heavier synthetic grease would. I mean, you could see I removed some that was stuck to the side, but that's basically the only area where the grease was. It wasn't really like on the gear teeth itself. So Cornhead grease, it's supposed to spread evenly. It's a little more viscous. It's not as thick as these two, but I think that's what I'm gonna go with. All right, so you got your green, you got your blue. I prefer the color on this. Then you got your red. So check this out. This is this consistency of this grease. little more runny and that's what the claims are is this flings around it gets on the gears better and once it binds it's good to go all right so that's the corn head grease all right so here's the maxima oh this is so much more heavy you can just feel it by messing with it I mean look at that that stuff is just gonna stick to the side of the case. I mean, I love this grease, you know, for pivots and moving parts, but not inside of a gearbox, I guess. I don't know, I'm new to this. But this is just telling me that it's gonna stick to the sides and really not the moving parts. I don't know, I could be wrong. Clean this off, we're doing science here. All right, so here's the Mobile One Synthetic. Now this feels heavier yet. I mean, look at that. That's some thick stuff right there. It's like peanut butter. This would be my last choice. This stuff is heavy. I don't think I'd use this. All right, that's the three. But I'm going with this. All right, so nowhere on this Mobile One synthetic grease does it say anything about gear boxes. You know, it says wheel bearings, chassis, suspension, universal joints. Same with the Maxima, joints and moving parts, but nothing about gearboxes. The Cornhead, Cornhead gear cases, irrigation system gearboxes, and gearboxes requiring an LGI, I don't know what that is, honestly, grade zero grease. Also back here, operating temperatures from negative 20 Fahrenheit to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Problem solving grease for gearboxes and leaky seals in LGI grade number zero. This says gearboxes on it. That's what this is. So that's what I'm going with. All right, I'm going to remove this ring right here. I already got it started with the snap ring pliers. Just a little bit more. Let me get her off there. Woo! Okay. There she is. Right there. Don't want to lose that. You can see that in there? A little bit of rust. No bueno. I'm going to clean these up really good. All right. There's that. Teeth look good, but I'm seeing a little bit of rust in there. I thought this grease is supposed to be a rust inhibitor. Huh. 
See that right there? I don't know if you can pick up on that. All right, got this big dog right here. There we go. Hey, it's got paws in it. Check that out. Should I change those paws? <laughs> wow, interesting. And no grease at all down here. Okay. All right, so there's the inside of that, underside. Absolutely no grease. But the wear doesn't look bad. You got your teeth in here. They look pretty stout. The gears look good, but they do have some rust on there. I don't know if you're picking that up. Can you see that? A little bit of rust. Look at that, I can wipe it right off. Huh. I don't think water gets in there, but got some needle bearings in there down inside. They look good. There's a rubber seal on here. I don't really want to mess with that. Keep the dirt out. <laughs> all right. All right. So I'm going to clean all this grease that's in here out. Start with some fresh grease. Some of that corn head. I honestly don't know what kind of grease this, that's in here, but it's not too heavy actually. It's actually a pretty light um, feeling grease. Clean it up. Because from what I read, some greases you don't want to mix. Just because of their properties. I'm no scientist, but I'm just kind of doing what other people have done. I'm not a pioneer. I'm just uh, an explorer. That's kind of concerning. I mean, look at that in there. That looks like rust. I don't know. Is it burned up grease? I'm not an expert. Bearings feel really good. Good to know. Yeah, I mean, look at that. There's no grease down in these teeth at all. A little bit concerning, whatever. All right, you can see that, the surface of that gear. A little bit of wear, but I don't think it's anything to be concerned with. Just a little bit marring, scratching. That might be normal. I'm not sure. Just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, I probably shouldn't be doing this over the motor case, but let me move over. Got this nice little toothbrush. Brass bristles. Don't want to mess up the uh, gears. Not that I'm putting any pressure or anything, but just get in between every gear. I don't want any metal. I know, probably boring, but just thought I'd show everyone. I don't think it's rust. I don't know what that is. Like I said, it could be burned up grease, maybe used grease. All right. Somebody chime in. Tell me your expert opinion on gears and brown substance inside. Like I said, maybe that grease wasn't a good corrosion inhibitor. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just a dude. Likes to ride bikes. Likes to make them better. Alright. Alright. I'm going to start with this main gear right here. I'm going to put a little bit of this corn head grease. down in there get it nice coating on those teeth now I don't want to use too much of this stuff I don't want to go too heavy so just enough I 
I don't want to get this stuff inside the uh, electronics since we're dang sure. So just a little bit at a time, a little dab. And disclaimer, don't do what I'm doing. I'm experimenting. If you attempt to do this on your own, <laughs> it's your fault. If it gets effed up, all right. That to me looks pretty good, pretty decent. And I'm gonna put a little bit on this right here, on this Paul. Not too much, because look at that stuff. I know how Pauls can be. They can stick. I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit on there. I'll be happy with that. A little bit on this shaft. All right, next I'm gonna drop in this gear. I'm just getting this thing all nice and coated. Get those teeth full. That's where you want it. Stuff is pretty runny. Now, I'm not going to take the bearing apart because they feel fine. Somebody said pack the bearings, but you know, the bearings feel fine to me. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm not going that extreme. All right, next is the big dog bearing. I got the teeth all coated. I got the needle bearings on the inside. I got a good film on that. All right, so I almost forgot. To set this thing down inside, you got to insert this so you can get those paws collapsed. All right, to sit in there. And I'll put a little bit of grease right here on the inside of that too. What the heck? All right, here we go. Nice and gently. There we go. Push that down, that little, there's a seal on there. A little rubber seal, it's trying to come out. Don't let it out. Okay, cause you got to get that uh, sir clip back in there. Okay. All right, there's that one. There it is. All right, this is some slippery stuff, dude. I'm trying to grab my gloves. I cannot get a grip on them at all. This is, it's real liquidy, but at the same time, it's, you know, it holds together pretty well. All right, so I'm putting that snap ring back in place. There it is, you hear it snap. Time to put it back together. Make sure that gasket's still good. It's all lined up. Gasket's nice. Little pin right there, guide pin. Guide pin right here, guide pin right here. Okay, all right. That wasn't too difficult, but it did require some uh, <laughs> very, making sure everything is in there, nothing's pinched, all the edges look good. Nice and sealed. This is still good. Okay. Clean this up a little bit right here. Yeah, it required a little bit of a, just some close attention to making sure everything's lining up as you're inserting. You wanna follow those bearings, those guide pins, the wires, you don't wanna smash them. All right, so it's in. Now we got our screws right here, I'm dropping them in. Four millimeter hex wrench. I'm not gonna go crazy tight. I'm just gonna start them. I'm gonna work it one directly across from the other. You don't want this thing warping. You want it to be an even Okay. 
I'll just go snug. Start over here. Just crisscross pattern. You know what I mean? So, kind of like putting on a tire on a car or a truck. All right, sealed. Time to install back in the bike. Look at that. It's my baby. It's going to be a boy. It's, I'm carrying it low. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. I don't feel any binding any, or anything in there. It feels really smooth. All right. Time to install. All right. So I'm going to use a little bit of dielectric grease on these. Um, just on the ends. I'm not going crazy. I'm not putting it directly in the plug, but you know, just a little bit on the ends like that. Just to make it easier to insert and remove. Is this recommended? I don't know. My electrician? No. This is just me doing my thing. Don't copy me. Disclaimer. Do this at your own risk. <laughs> I'm just a garage mechanic want to be so someone's got to do it I know there's a lot of people out there thinking what I'm doing is probably wrong and backwards and all that good stuff but hey I'm doing it what are you doing all right all right let's get this motor back in it's ready all right we're gonna weigh this sucker this motor while it's out. I know it does have a uh, crank arm still on it in the pedal, but I'm just gonna get a nice estimate, guesstimate of what that motor weighs. All right, there you go, 15.2 pounds. And like I said, that's with one crank arm on and a pedal. I mean, it's leaning on that, so it really doesn't matter probably. 15.2 pounds. All right, one thing I did notice, check that out. Doesn't that look weird to you? Doesn't look like a perfect circle to me. It's kind of oblong, oval shaped. Looks like a little piece right here is about to chip off. I don't know. Whatever, I'm running it. All that weight resting on that bolt that runs through it. Oh well, what can I do about it? All right, this is probably the most difficult part of the whole process matching up the wires there's one Let's see. there's two there's three and the main one right here Boom. okay these blue ones remain unplugged and your speed, your pickup sensor. Okay. This is the sketchy part. I'm gonna drop that over there. Push all this forward. And yeah, someone asked, can you do this without removing the motor and just take off these five or six bolts? Or screws yeah you can I'm gonna do Ted's motor next and we're just gonna lay the bike on its side remove these six screws pull the cover off and we're gonna attempt to do it that way makes more sense I just wanted to get this thing out on a tabletop to show everybody so all right all right there she is she's down all the wires look good over here they're clear let me show you this side so I can show you where that speed sensor is. Woo. Your speed sensor cable, that's where you want it. You don't want it up under here, not yet. So when we put this cover on right here, we're going to uh, run that up and through so it doesn't get pinched. All right, time to put the uh, mounting bolts through. All right, so there's the hole for the first mounting bolt. second and the third getting the paint off this bolt All right, there we go one done um, I'm gonna put a little bit of grease also as I slide them in through there 
right this side making sure none of the wires are sticking out I did have one wire sticking out I just caught it when I came to this side and you know what it was the light wire the wire with the blue um, tabs on it thank God nothing important boom there we go so I'm gonna put some uh, grease on these bolts and a totally different grease this is grease for bicycles Bontrager some track grease I'm gonna put it on those bolts right there that I just cleaned up and slide them through all right so just a little bit on these just a little bit not, not anything crazy tap those through ever so gently look at that okay most important tool on the Rockstar, mallet or hammer. <laughs> I'm joking. All right, let's see if we can get this one started. I know, it's not a track, it's not a giant, it's not a pole, pole, however you say that, but it's fun. It's all that matters to me, and it works washers and the nuts Is that No buddy sorry I'm filming no bird sounds Wait how long is it going to be <laughs> Ah give me like 30 minutes So these are lock nuts nylock you don't need a uh, glue lock tot on these Kid. He loves birds. He knows all the sounds. He loves making bird noises. But you need some quiet, bud. Peace and quiet. All right. All right. Tighten them down. Make sure they're not cross-threaded. <laughs> Thirteen millimeter socket. Mm, nothing crazy. Just a nice. Mm, you know what I mean? Okay, that's it. Now I gotta run the cover along here. He's all secure. Nice and snug. You don't want to crack that plastic little case. Just that's why you put that blue Loctite on there, just for that added security. All right. So for your pickup sensor wire, I don't know if you can see that, but that's where I have mine coming out. Right under there. It's a little gap. And don't worry, it's not pinching anything. But when you put this in, you want to have a little bit of slack, about that much. Just for the suspension travel, that might be a little much, but you know, something like that. Just so the swing arm can move. I like these little stickers. They're still in there. Just a little piece of vinyl I cut. Just for looks. All right, she's coming right along. There we go. All right, so my pickup sensor had those two spacers in there, and I threw a little bit of Loctite on there. I pretty much Loctite everything on this bike because it's comes everything is not loctited stuff rattles loose and so it's good practice loctite all the parts all the little things they'll vibrate loose eventually so all right so running these zip ties through here secure that wire and let's see Clean this up. These splines. Is that this? Now this is a reverse thread. So 
and I'm going to use a little bit of Loctite on that too. There we go. There we go. Bottom bracket tool. Thirty-five newton meters on this, and I do have a torque wrench for it. All right, got my chain whip on there. Here we go. Oh, okay. All right, so when you put your crank on, and I know this seems lame, make sure you're directly crossed. Right? You know what I'm saying? This one's opposite of this one. Believe me, it's happened. Not to me, but I've seen videos of people doing it. All right, so I'm putting this on. Loctite, of course, a little bit of blue. These do have a tendency to come loose. A lot of people have been complaining about theirs coming loose, but you wanna do 40 four newton meters on this thing and blue loctite and check it periodically you won't have the problem with the cranks coming off all right for pedals you want to use grease you don't want to use blue loctite because these are self-tightening basically and so everyone knows that the left and right pedals. What's up, bud? I'm going to listen to my bird recording. Go ahead, dude. So everyone knows that um, the threading on pedals is directional. So this side is righty tidy, lefty loosey. The opposite side is le lefty tidy, righty loosey. So. Man, that feels so smooth. Do you hear anything? I'm just playing. So yeah, it feels really good. Okay, so far so good. All right, I'm using this brush. Get in here, make sure there's no, there's a little piece of something in there. I can see it. Probably some mustard grass. We've got a lot of that around here right now. It gets in there causes some shifting issues. I haven't had shifting issues on this bike. I keep the uh, derailleur pretty, pretty tuned up, but have the opportunity with the chain off right now. I'm just gonna clean it up. Nice little brush. This came with that um, bike washing kit. Got these nice tweezers right here. I do see a little piece of something right here. See if I can get it out. Look at that. Some material in there. There you go. All right, so I got one of these chain washers. Just gonna yank it back and forth a couple times. Got some soapy water in there. This also came in that bike washing kit. on release the clutch there we go okay pretty much a drop on each link trifle I love this stuff it smells good too let it sit for about five minutes then we'll wipe it off. Let me go through the gears real quick.
Star Ratchet Hub. Sounds pretty good. All right, that wheel is still spinning. I'm gonna put the battery back in. All right, so I get a lot of questions about my battery cover. It's off an LX. Uh, my buddy Bruce made it for me. I don't know if you can just order an LX cover and slide it on here, but it never had the wings on it to begin with. So some people cut them off, they choose to come off. I would personally, I think it looks a lot cleaner. But you can see this end, you didn't have to do anything to get it to fit. But on this end, you can see it took a little bit of trimming to get it on there. So is this thing ready to go? Oh, she's ready. This little post that you turn right there, I don't know if you can see that. It was a little bit dry, so put a little bit of dielectric grease on it. I don't want this area collecting too much dirt, so hopefully that's the problem. Let's see if we can get it in there now. Take that key out. Okay. There we go. Keys out. Okay, locked in place. All right, let's flip her over, turn the battery on, see what happens. All right, there she is. She's done. Let's test her out. She's a beauty and a beast. All right, here we go. Power on. Come on, baby, come on. <sighs> yes, okay, we got power. All right, let's take it for a ride now. See what that uh, motor sounds like. All right, power on. Pedal assist, I'm gonna put it all the way up. Five, 100% charge. All right, here we go. Now keep in mind, this motor was kind of quiet to begin with. It's not on the louder side of some that I've heard. So let's check it out. Shut up and ride, right? It's punchy. That's another thing. I don't have my GoPro Winslayer on, so. For sure. Feels better too. The motor just feels like almost like it has more than I. I don't know how's that how's that possible. Pulls up nice. Bad for downhill, pulling up. Let's do some urban free riding. A little bit of stairs over here. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Just did a little spin out in there. This motor's got some wibbles. All right. Love it. Feels good. Stoked. All right, everyone. I'd call that a success. Runs good. Runs smooth. A little bit quieter. But it was quiet to begin with, like I said. And um, I plan on riding tomorrow with Teddy and the boys. Anyways, everybody, thanks for watching. Please stay stoked. Have a nice day.